Hey everybody, we are the Fishery Science and Emerging Technologies Program, also known as FSET for short, at the New England Aquarium's Anderson Cabot Center for Ocean Life. We're excited to talk to you today about some of our research and share a little bit of information about some of the ocean's most iconic and interesting species. We thought we'd start by introducing ourselves and our program. Although each FSET scientist has their own research projects and focal species, all of our work shares the common goal of promoting science-based species management and conservation. To maximize the impact of our research, we all work closely with fishermen and resource managers to collect data that will help improve fisheries and species management in both New England and the broader Atlantic Ocean. Although gathering information on marine species is not always easy, we hope to show you how the FSA team develops and or uses cutting egg technologies to answer cool, interesting, and important questions like how far do common thresher sharks migrate? How many jellyfish can a leatherback turtle eat in a single day? Does a codfish survive after being caught and thrown back by a fisherman? How does shark courtship and mating work? How stressed out do sharks get when they're caught on the long line? Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Jeff Niebone from the FSET group. Some might call me a complete fish fanatic as aside from doing research on fish at the aquarium, I'm also an avid recreational fisherman and spend as much time as I possibly can on the water. Throughout my career, my passion for doing scientific research has always been fueled by my desire to promote long-term sustainability uh, in commercial and recreational fisheries and to try to mitigate the negative impacts of fishing on marine species. In my five years at the aquarium, I've been really lucky and fortunate to be able to do work on a lot of different species, but in this series, I'm gonna to talk to you about how I use tags to track the movements and survival of several marine fish species, including sharks, skates, and tuna. Hi, welcome. I'm Dr. Cara Dodge, and I'm also a research scientist in the FSET group where I focus on the flippered versus the finned species. In other words, the sea turtles. I joined the New England Aquarium in 2018, but I've worked with aquarium scientists on sea turtle research for over 15 years. I'm intensely curious about the natural world, especially cryptic critters like turtles. And I use a variety of tags to understand turtle movements, their behaviors, diet, and habitats. And I work with our veterinary and rescue teams to investigate sea turtle health and physiology. My work ranges from tiny cold stun Kemp's Ridleys to giant thousand pound leatherbacks, but with the common goal of reducing human threats and promoting species recovery and conservation. Hello, I'm Emily Jones and I am an associate scientist in the FSET group. I joined the aquarium in 2013 and since then I've had the privilege and the pleasure of contributing to a lot of really exciting fisheries research at the Anderson Cabot Center. Much of my work has focused on the recreational fishery right here in the Gulf of Maine, where we investigate ways to improve the sustainability of popular species such as cod and haddock. One of the most gratifying parts of our work is definitely seeing positive conservation action taken as a result of our data, whether that's a change in regulations or people adopting more sustainable fishing practices. Our ultimate goal is always to improve the sustainability of vulnerable species, fisheries, and ecosystems. So it's super rewarding to see that in action. I'm really proud of the work that we do in the FSET program. Hey, I'm Dr. Nick Whitney, Senior Scientist and Chair of the FSET program. I spent the last 20 years or so trying to learn about sharks and their natural environment using several different types of electronic tags. For the past several years, I've been mostly using accelerometers. This is the same technology that's found in your smartphone or your smartwatch to study the fine scale behavior of sharks in the wild. These tags can tell us every movement the shark makes, every tail beat, every change in body posture, swimming depth or temperature on a second by second basis. We often use these tags to find out what happens to sharks after they've been caught and released by fishermen. But in this series, I'll show you what it's like to use these tags to study the courtship and mating behavior of sharks in the wild. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Ryan Nodick. I'm an associate scientist here in the FSET program, and I've been working with this group for the past five years while completing my degree. In that time, I've worked on a bunch of really exciting projects, from here in our backyard of New England to the warmer waters of the Bahamas. In all of these projects, I've focused on how fishing impacts the health and survival of sharks and skates that are often accidentally captured as bycatch. Now, there are many ways to tackle this topic. We can use accelerometers to look at animal behavior during capture. We can analyze blood samples to understand how stressed out these animals are. 
and we can monitor their survival after release using electronic tags. And we can use all this information to develop and promote sustainable fishing practices that will help with the conservation of these species that are incredibly important to our ocean's ecosystems. Thanks for watching. We invite you to tune in again to learn more about how we transform science into action and how we use tag technology to investigate the secret lives of sharks, fish, and sea turtles.